another video. Today we are going to be focusing on the magical topic of hands. And hands are every artist's dread. Every artist hates to draw them. We tend to think that we are drawing amazing hands and we end up drawing like little sausages. Boop, 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 boop. You know, um, we all never know exactly what to do with hands. And that is what we're going to solve today. So the first thing that we have to realize whenever that we're like about to draw a new part of the body is that we have to factor in the, the parts that consist of the part that we're trying to draw. In this case, we have a hand. Most times, people represent it like a little box and they have their fingers sticking out. And even though that's not necessarily a bad way to do it, it is not technically correct. The way that we have to be looking at hands is not necessarily a box, because they're not a box. If you see my hand perfectly well right here, there is a taper to this. So what you got to do is you have to draw that taper. Now, when we're doing that, we have to if, imagine we're just looking at hands from the top right now. The way that I would go about it is I would curve the top part where the fingers are going to come out. I would just curve it. And curving it is the first step. Next is realizing that these two fingers right here take up most of the hand or most of the palm. These two are always going to be more dominant than the other two. So it's not necessarily split through the middle. So I just like to split it into two parts. The part that's gonna have the little fingers and the part that's gonna have the bigger fingers. In between these little spots, at the top, you can draw your knuckles. And it's these little bumpy parts that stick out. And then from there, we can start measuring with our own body where the hand you know like lands so let's say we want to learn how to draw up to this segment so this segment right here is a little bit shorter than my palm but if you see it from the bottom it's significantly smaller than my palm it's about like a third so if i wanted to find that measurement it'd be a third about it's about there and all these like little measurements, I make them in my head as I'm drawing. So it's uh, like I just start measuring things against each other. And then I start figuring out how things fit. So in this case, I would measure out a third. Then this part and this part are roughly the same size. And then this part and this part, this part's a little bit smaller. Boom. So I would mop out my fingers, something like that. And just keeping it really, really simple at first. And then doing the same structure, keeping that same curvature as you go around the fingers. Obviously the pinky is a little bit smaller than the others. So we want to still keep it a little bit shorter. And the fingers also don't point in the same direction. Techn well, I guess technically they can, like this, if you like press them together, but if you're just relaxed, you can see that they go out in every different direction. So you got to keep that in mind whenever you're drawing, because a lot of the times when hands look flat, it's because, you know, everything looks like it's coming from the same direction. Now, the thumb. The way that I like to divide the hand is at the middle and right there where I mentioned, you know, dividing the two fingers, kind of like a penguin thing. So the thumb or the little triangle 
that's going to make up the thumb, boom, 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 the beginning of the thumb, is going to be right there. So we're looking at this from the top, so it's going to be boom, boom, boom. So that's the shape that we want to draw for the beginning of our thumb. And this drawing on yourselves is a, such an easy way to learn how to draw different parts of the body. Just rotate it, and then you have it right there. Seriously, draw on yourselves. Use it as reference. I'm going to do it a lot today so I can, you know, show you guys <laughs> everything. So, yeah, but I do recommend it because it's a really, really 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 good technique um, from here the knuckle is right here and right there so the knuckle is at the base of this part not the not this inside part. not the inside part right here and then from there about the same distance from here to here gets us to this section and then this section has the nail which curves and then we would have the shape of our hand, right? So it curves and then when you divide it, these two fingers are a little bit bigger than these two. They're not all the same size. Now when you go into your wrist, the wrist moves up and down, but it doesn't really change much. So I just like to draw a simple line. Cool. So whenever you're transcending this into a drawing, it can just be as simple as that. And then fingers can be coming out however you want them however many like segments you want to like I'm gonna like show you that it doesn't as long as you know where the parts go like you can modify hands and it'll look okay it won't look bad you know so you just have quick hands now let's see what happens when you want to rotate them and you know see them from the bottom and from the side so from the side hands are relatively flat they don't really have much depth you know, they're as thin as your fingers. They're relatively flat. So, normally, and they're really flexy, too. Like, if you see the rotation of my, like, the arch of my thumbs as I move my hands in different positions, it's a lot more round than people think. So, how I like to draw hands, especially if they're going to have, like, a really fun, like, curvature to them, I do this shape. Like a Pringle. Imagine this is a forearm. So this is the shape that I like to do. Let me scoot this in a little bit. And then I do the same thing. I divide it into the sections that I want. And then wherever I want to draw the fingers from, that's where I start drawing my fingers from. But it serves as a really quick placeholder for like semi, like, I don't know, more like a stylized anatomy. Not necessarily that stylized, but I don't know. Uh, for some reason, it just works for me. Uh, let's try a different hand. Uh, let's do it a little bit more from the front. And then this one will be like a magician going like See, it just gives you the guides that you need. As long as you understand a little bit of the foreshortening that has to go on in order to get that depth. Okay, uh, let's see. More hand advice. So I'm just going to draw some hands. Like, I'm just going to make random shapes into hands. 
and explain to you like why I chose certain shapes. Uh, let's uh, just try doing that little Pringle shape in a bunch of different positions. And I'm just going in, uh, not really like trying to uh, choose a certain shape to be a certain hand right now. I'm just trying to like give that little Pringle shape a little bit of depth and it'll help, I guess, if I distinguish the top from the bottom. Let's make that the top. Uh, make that the top, make that the top, the top, okay. And just mark them like that. So with each one of these, I would have to determine where I want the fingers. Since I mentioned that I like the curve being where the fingers go, I would just start drawing from there. Uh, I would subdivide it into my four parts. And then from there, try to figure out where the top of the fingers would be. So let's say this hand is going to be just like a person opening their hand like this. Right. So I draw the little area, the little fleshy part right here for the thumb, coming from the bottom of the palm thing, into the two segments that may consist of the thumb. And then from here, since I want my thumbs and my fingers to be going back, like someone's going like this, I would just literally just bend them back. Uh, there's a little fleshy part right here that I like to draw, kind of like mittens or like uh, the little paws of a dog or a cat. Uh, I just like to have that feel right there. For some reason, it just uh, like makes sense to me to have like a little bit of a padding right here. Maybe not as big as I drew it right there, but but for the most part, you would get a hint. A little messy hand and probably a little distorted. Uh, let's redraw that real quick. <laughs> I gotta redeem myself. That was a horrible hand. Rah, there you go. It's a little bit better. There you go. Uh, let's see this one. Um, let's say the fingers, I want them to be like a fist. So another good thing you can do is look at your own hand. You do have two of them, hopefully. And if just look at it, identify the parts that you want to draw. Have our drawn hand right here. Let's say I want to draw this part. So I'm just flipping these shapes. And I'm using the other parts as guides. You can get the general feel for it in a, like your initial sketch. Like get the general feel for the power, for the silhouette of it. And then you can go in with another marker like later on. Or if you're drawing with pencil, you would delete and then you would ink exactly how you want it to come out. But drawing loose, drawing quick, is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, if it's messy, don't worry about it being messy. Uh, you just got to learn to draw the different poses. Um, I'm really seeing these as like the little thumb part. A little fleshy part. And then, uh, let's see. Let's make one where it's like pointing up. So. If you start taking into consideration the depth of the actual like body part that you're drawing and realizing that it has a, f a front, a side, and you start seeing that within your drawings, hands are going to become incredibly easy for you. Uh, once you start mapping things in 3D, instead of uh, seeing them as flat objects, for example, in this one, I can determine that I want the finger to go this way. So I'm drawing my perspective guides and then using those 
to draw the part. Now I'm gonna go like really weird. I'm gonna draw the knuckle and then I want this finger to be completely different. I just want it to go into this way. So I'm gonna draw my perspective guides. And then once you realize that you can just kind of move any character body part like a mannequin, once you learn you know, how things pivot, how things move, um, how things rotate, like for example, like maybe I'm just a little bit like off, but I can't bend my fingers much more than this. And that's minuscule. That's like, if my hand is flat, it's like barely any, right? It's in my thumb. That's not very much as opposed to the range of motion that you have coming down. Coming down, your fingers technically can go up to 90 degrees. So your fingers can go 90 degrees. Very rarely do they go past 90 degrees. It's pretty much impossible. Unless you have like sunken in fingers. Uh, so those are the limitations that you have with your art, like with the uh, body pose. And as long as you start staying within those, it ends up looking okay. Now with cartooning and stuff like that, that just all goes out the door because you can draw cartoon hands doing absolutely whatever you want. And cartoon hands are amazing and super, super simple. They can just be little sausages. And the little sausages can have a lot of depth. As long as you, you know, represent the parts that you're supposed to be drawing. Like you can, those little Mickey hands are fantastic for making super fun animated like poses and they're super easy to do to make like little mickey hands all you got to do is make a circle and then add three little holes where your fingers are going to come from and one from your thumb so four little like placeholders now in that sphere those placeholders each have a little thumb or a little sausage and the little sausage comes in all different directions And that little sausage is the same. It's just the same sh bean shape, just rotated like in different directions. And then from here, you connect the index to the thumb, doing a little straight line. And you add the little fleshy parts. Boom, boom. And you have Mickey hands. Those are super fun to do. Uh, honestly, you can just draw those Mickey hands doing whatever. It's just a super simple way of uh, drawing a gesture, super quick. Uh, so I recommend if you don't wanna like, you know, really like learn anatomy and stuff like that right now, eventually you should, everybody should. But if you don't wanna learn it right now, just stick to a little Mickey hands and practice your perspective. Um, as long as you're practicing some sort of your foundations, everything should be fine. Uh, in this case, let's see, how do we want to make it? Just make little princess hands. Using the curvature of the little potato chip that I drew. Uh, it just seemed like a nice little princess pose. You know, you just talked about the limitations of going up with your fingers. So, you know, this is a pose that tends to be used a lot by, you know, pinup artists and stuff like that to be able to get that, like, like playful look to their characters. So a curvature up tends to give you that elegant look. Even if you do it when it's facing down, It tends to look 
really whimsical and really playful. Now, that's it. If you want to develop one really, 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 really clean style of drawing hands, uh, I recommend that you learn anatomy. And the anatomy behind these hands uh, it's a little bit more complex than most people think. Uh, and it takes time. It, it takes time, and I'm going to explain to you guys why. But I'm going to read some comments to see if you all left any comments. Okay, so Mr. Jonathan K. Hey, Rodgon. Hey, guys. Drag us on still. Howdy. Hey, what's up again? What's up, Blaze Akuma? What's up, Sensei? You are the best, hands down. Woo! Thank you. Corey is my apprentice, and he is freaking awesome, too. Bernard the Vincent. Yow. Teach me how to draw thumbs, and just tuned in and had to thumbs up this already. Hello. Hello, finally caught your live stream. How do I work on likeness? I rarely get likeness. We're going to focus on hands today. So we will work on more, like, heads and faces and stuff like that some other time. I think right now I'm just going to have to explain all the different ways that I know how to draw hands or that I what I think about when I'm trying to draw hands and then try to like portray that to you guys. So, all right. So let's say that I actually want to draw an illustration of a hand. Um, if I'm drawing something coming into perspective, I would sketch out first, and you guys can't see that. I would sketch out the basic shapes that are going to make the hand. In this case, I'm going to make someone, you know, punching in. Um, so my hand, the way that I see the shape, kind of looks like a tapered, like, you know, pyramid, like a shot glass or something. And it's little where the little finger is. So it makes sense. I'm going to divide it the same way, smaller part for the last two fingers, bigger part for the first two fingers. And then we're going to have our thumb that's going to be coming up and in front of our hand. But our hand has a little fold right here. So it's not just completely flat. Boom, boom. Right? This finger is going to be pointing a slightly different direction, more forward. And then I'm just mapping everything out in very, very simple, blocky shapes. All right, so we have our hand. And let me start darkening the line so you understand what I'm envisioning when I see that. So I'm going to start off with the things that are further forward. So in this case, it's going to be the knuckle into the top part of the finger and drawing a couple of the folds from the skin. And then this is going to be going down into where the thumb is. So it's going to fold in there. So it changes direction. So shading on the bottom of it makes it look like it's going into perspective. Now, drawing simple little lines can represent all the other parts. So if I draw a little line right here, it's going to represent this. I can also shade one side if I want to create a little bit more contrast. Uh, from here, I would go into the knuckle and then into the area with the thumb that has its own little knuckle part right there, into the front knuckle from the finger and then just curving it in to that area. Then I would go in with my next one. Seeing as I would start right there, I have a curvature to my hand, right? So start right there, I would go down, I would have the knuckle that would indicate the direction change. And then these, even though the guide that I drew extends, it's just the guide. And I know that it's going to be really, really long if I do that. So I'm going to 
just cut my guide short and then just use those guidelines that I drew to be able to figure out where the other parts of the fingers would go. The palm would extend a little bit behind the fingers because everything is getting squished in. And once we, let's just put some color on this so that everything stands out. So we would just have a general idea of what a hand would be, like punching in. And then, you know, whatever you draw in the back just would come out from the back of the hand. But going into perspective, everything would taper. So it would just go deeper and deeper and deeper, and it would just look like you're punching really, really fast. Uh, okay, let's see. Another approach to hands. Uh, I like to call this the beanbag approach. And uh, a lot of these aren't called that, like, I guess. Uh, these are just ways that I call my things. <laughs> uh, so I like to make, like, a rounded beanbag or, like, a rounded cereal shape, like a cereal box shape. Something like that. This would be the depth of the hand. This would be the width of the hand. So I like to give myself a little bit of width whenever it comes down to my drawings with hands, just because it helps me define a little bit more of a like personality to them. Uh, a lot of people don't do that, but you know, like, eventually you end up finding like the style that you like like to draw your things in, and that's just what I ended up liking. Uh, so I would approach it like that. Then from here, it's pretty much the same process for most of them. Uh, try to find the different sides so you know you know what type of hand you want to do. In this case, it's just going to be like a wave, like yay. So I know that my thumb is going to come out of this area. It's normally around like half of the palm, maybe a little bit lower. Uh, that's normally where this sits. So from there, I'm going to draw it coming out and really going into perspective. So I'm gonna push that thumb, that perspective of that thumb going back. And if I have to show guidelines so it reads a little bit better, it'd be like that. Right? And then I would go in, it's still a curvature at the top, even though, you know, it might not look like it, I'm still thinking of that curvature at the top. Uh, and then each finger would be doing its own thing. So I can visualize that the knuckle would be around here. And then those fingers would each be going into perspective. So could be one, two, three, and four. And then just, at first, if it's easier for you, just work them like little sausages. Little tiny sausages. Like, honestly, like, it sounds super silly, but that is a really easy way to remember how to draw them. A sausage, and then stripe the sausage into three parts, so you have your knuckles. Like, that's, that's how I learned how to do it. Like, it's kind of like um, learning to draw your, or like to tie your shoelaces with like the bunny approach. And then you like learn how to like tie your shoelaces in a couple different ways. And it's like, oh my God, I've been doing this wrong this whole time. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, what are the things you should keep in mind whenever you're drawing hands? Oh, uh, whenever you're placing your hand on an object, Make sure that you're using your digits, in this case, your fingertips and stuff, to create depth or create weight. Uh, 
So whenever you place something on something, in this case, hands down on like a table, try to avoid just putting your like hands, like picking up things or like leaning on things without any depth to them. Like when they're just touching, it doesn't look right. So always make sure to add that like little curvature or like that little tiny change of direction. That tends to help a lot, especially when you're grabbing things. Let's say you want to grab, you know, like this. You can just draw your perspective shapes going around it. Like little sausages just rotating. And that's actually a really good exercise if you want to like practice going around shapes. Just wrap like spheres, you can wrap cubes. With, like little slugs, or, like the little sausages or whatever you want to call them. But this doing exercises like these where you wrap things around objects that you drew they help you with eyebrows hands feet muscles uh hair it things like these little tiny exercises if you master them it becomes really really cool because then you can transfer that and then transfer that to like a face really quickly And you have everything is going to start having depth once you start visualizing things like that. Right? So you're going to start visualizing things in 3D. And everything is just going to start falling into place because once you learn where something goes, it's very hard to not remember where that goes again. Uh, it's honestly, it's, it's kind of like riding a bike. Like you just have to just have to keep adding things to your drawings. Like keep pushing the perspective. Keep pushing the perspective every single time. Like if you draw your faces like this right now. Right? If you just draw them like flat profiles, if you want to, you know, increase your drawing's appeal, try to draw it slightly in perspective. Even the slightest change to the chin or the hairline or anything of that sort uh it makes your drawings look a lot better try to avoid drawing straightforward faces and just give them a slight instead of boy if i completely face forward just slightly to the side and that alone will help you have much more appealing poses faces and all that junk. And pretty much all your drawings are just going to get better and better over time because when you start avoiding just doing the easy poses, the easy things that come easy to you are the things you already know. So you don't need to draw the same things over and over. Uh, unless you're doing that as a project or you're doing that as a, you know, like, a, for a certain thing like mastering a certain style I wouldn't recommend drawing the same things that you already think that you're great at uh, try to expand that so that you can you know get better at everything not just you know the things that you like uh, if you are bad at anatomy hey get out there and draw some people um, go learn a little bit about like the structure of the human body and if you suck at perspective, you know, like, 
that's honestly that's a tough one but picking up a book uh, a couple people actually explain these things really really good and let me look at the comments uh, it's live yes it's live I'm actually drawing good hands yeah most people will probably draw really good hands once you get to a certain point uh, it's all about sketching and getting them right like it it's still a really annoying part of the drawings but it gets easier over time uh, made it, yeah that sounds like a super helpful practice I'm excited to try it um, I usually find the frontal view of the face harder to draw because everything has to line up yeah when you incorporate symmetry into a drawing it becomes a very difficult thing so one little thing that I got told when I was younger and starting out doing caricatures is that symmetry is completely overrated uh, let's let's do a test so let's start a test so we're gonna do two quick faces and I know this is in hands but I'll go back to some hands after I do this okay so we have two two faces one, we're going to try to draw symmetrical. One, we're going to try to draw slightly off the middle. Still pretty close to the middle, but not quite in the middle. So the problem with drawing the frontal view, if you want perfect symmetry, is that if you don't get that perfect symmetry and you're really aiming for it, it's very, very discouraging. And it lends, you know, itself for like mistakes, errors, and stuff like that. On the meanwhile, when you're drawing something in three quarters, it's a lot more forgiving. And it's not just more forgiving, it's also incredibly, like, more appealing than drawing them from the front. Uh, when I'm drawing caricatures, this is how I normally draw my caricatures. Uh, mostly because it just looks more appealing. Uh, now, when it comes down to the noses, in this case, I would just draw something super simple like this. Uh, do the same thing over here. Remember that the nose is actually a little bit off from the front in the middle. So, even though we draw it straight in the middle on this side, it wouldn't be straight in the middle when you look at it from the side because it would stick out. Uh, the mouths become a little bit more boring unless you have like a certain facial expression in mind from the side you can make things look a little bit more sensual a little bit more playful and then the eyebrows as well uh, if you keep perfect symmetry kind of boring but if you don't you end up with a much much cooler facial expression and you also don't have to draw like the other ear <laughs> um, when it comes down to trying to match everything it just becomes a lot easier to draw it in three quarters uh, and it's not just easier it's just more appealing and like it challenges you more too so try to avoid going for the easy stuff and go for the more go for the sketches and the drawings that are going to teach you something uh, like I mentioned before your sketchbook is your drawing tool it's your learning tool um, you should be using your sketchbook as just like a guide. Uh, here, I'll show you a little bit of this sketchbook so far. This is the one that we've been using to learn. So, I took um, Marianne out for caricature training. And she was doing fantastic. And she, I was just teaching her the very basics of how to like draw people in profile, how to draw people frontal view and you know trying to give her a little bit of exercises of how to do <laughs> she drew me at the pool 
And then she went off with it, and it's been really, really cool. She's learned so much so quick. And if you all know her style, it is a very realistic style. It's a very, very detailed, realistic looking style. So I'm very proud of the, the progress she's made. Um, when it comes down to me using my sketchbook, normally I'm using it to either break down concepts that I want to teach or I'm using it to understand my sketches a little bit more. Um, I use sketches like this a lot. And then I start analyzing what happens if I if I thicken this line, right? So I thicken that line. But I want a really thin line there. But I want to see the contrast versus really thick and really thick on the bottom as well. This is the sort of stuff that I'm thinking about whenever I'm drawing. Um, if the nostril is shaped like a C with sharp edges versus if the nostril is rounder, what would look best? What looks more appealing? What is easier to calculate in 3D? What is the more difficult thing to get in the other perspectives that I draw things in? That, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm drawing things in my sketchbook. And when I honestly have nothing to draw, I'll just say something like, okay, I don't know what that's going to be, but I see that I drew a nose, so I'm going to draw that into a nose. Uh, and then I just start dissecting things in my head, and I know the general idea of what a nose is supposed to look like, so I can start having fun making anatomy that has never existed. And then at the same time, I'm practicing my anatomy and my knowledge, and I'm testing myself to see if I can actually do something like that. Let's say this lady would be like a lady with sunglasses. Right? So this is the sort of exercises that I find myself doing quite a bit. Mostly because it, it helps me expand my very narrow idea of what a feature is supposed to be. Um, so, and I find inspiration all the time when it comes down to trying to break my sketches down in a way that makes sense to other people. That is incredibly difficult and, and I found that to be uh, a very, very hard endeavor. Uh, let me get my other sketchbook because I, I like walking with you guys through my through my weekly tasks. So give me a second. So thank you all for waiting a second. Uh, let's move this one out for a little bit. And I know that you all enjoy little sketchbook tours. So I'm going to share with you a little bit of my pinup book that I've been doing. And I wanted to show a couple pages that I finished this week. So if you have not seen the pinup book so far, uh, the idea behind this was to create random, random color blobs. Random little color blobs with watercolor throughout the whole sketchbook. And then try to find a female figure within that area. Sometimes it proves very difficult. Sometimes, you know, you get inspired and you see a complete scene. You know, and then sometimes it's just the collage of very little things that start coming to mind whenever you're actually finishing your drawing. And this has been a fantastic experience and it has absolutely, doing that has absolutely made my drawing 10 times better. Having a sketchbook where you just try to fill everything with the same concept or the same idea just with the thought, like having the thought process of wanting to get better is what's going to get you better. Every single one of these drawings were mostly from memory. 
And every single time that I noticed something was off, I would make a note and try to improve it for the next one and for the next one. And when I found a really cool shape that I'd never drawn before, I would just memorize that and then just add that to my arsenal. And then it just started getting so much easier as I went. And I started realizing that I could manipulate the anatomy a lot better than I thought uh, just from drawing those body parts in so many different shapes. And then we have my normal sketchbook. So I think a couple weeks ago we left out around here. So we drew that last week and we drew heads. So throughout the week it was more of my own personal journey to learn a little bit more of how to draw the underside of the neck. And, oh, no, I think we actually, we, yeah, we went through these. Oh, so I drew myself as a cartoon a lot. Uh, oh, some wonderful news. This Friday, I'm going to be in a game show competition hosted by Wacom and the Bancroft Brothers. It's for Lightbox Expo, and I'm going to be competing in a royal like brawl of character designs against the animated life and Derek Lofman. So wish me luck because that is going to be awesome. Uh, I am so excited to do that. And if you all want to tune in, just keep uh, an eye out for my links and everything. I'm going to see if I can uh, share it with all of you. So uh, just wish me luck because this uh, this could lead to a lot of fun things. Uh, I've never really actually shown my skills or artwork to anyone except for like social media. I don't really like push my art to be in studios or anything. So it would be nice to see what comes from this. So if it comes to like with a couple like really cool opportunities, I would absolutely love that. Oh, so all this time I was just trying to draw the underside of the neck a little bit better, trying to understand it, trying to break it down so it makes sense to me, uh, trying to apply it to the different techniques that I've learned so far or that I have like created so far. And overall, when things start working out or I start seeing really cool patterns, like for example here, I noticed that you can break the nose bridge and the top of the nose into a segment that looks like an hourglass. And I'm in the process of finding out an easy way to make that into a really easy way to draw the nose. So it takes time for things like that to work, but it'll come eventually and it's going to benefit all of you. Then I drew my lovely lady. Uh, she was playing Assassin's Creed, looking really, really fine in her little tiny dress. Uh, we had gone to Brazilian barbecue and we had a fantastic night. And she killed a lot of a lot of Vikings. Um, more so, just trying to play a little bit with anatomy, trying to see if I can get the proportions down with a simple highlighter and a sketch. Uh, and honestly, I'm actually really proud of myself. Uh, a lot of these things are coming a lot easier than I thought, and it's been it's been a wonderful, wonderful week of sketching. Uh, I know I did a lot more sketching in my little sketch wallet, but I can't find it right now. But uh, let's go back to this guy. So that is normally how I go about, you know, um, drawing and learning and teaching and showing and doing everything that I do. Uh, I'm not a person that has all the free time in the world either. Uh, I work a book editing job nine to five, nine to six every day. And it's an amazing job, and I love it, but it's not something that, you know, allows me a lot of time after work and stuff. So I use my free time to show every, all of you how to achieve your dreams. And I love doing that, and I thank all of you that always tune into these streams. And I think I'm going to call it a night so I can go get some food and... Thank you all so much. I hope that you all learned a little bit. I know it wasn't very structured and I was just kind of like ranting on, 
but you know, hey, sketch sessions, right? Like, I'll try to make it better next time. Uh, but thank you all for joining with me. Uh, if you ever want to draw anything and tag me, I love seeing your guys' artwork. Uh, my sponsors are the Neek Sketchbooks, the makers of these fantastic sketchbooks. And I do, I am able to give people a 15% discount, I believe, with my code. It's RodGon15. And you guys can go to the Neek shop on their Instagram or theneek.com and get that there. And, and they're really cool sketchbooks. Uh, I absolutely love them. So thank you all so much. Oh, that's a fantastic way to support me as well. Uh, so have a fantastic week. I look forward to this Friday because I hope that I kick some butt. And I hope that a lot of you cheer for me, even if you don't get to go to the event. Um, that would be really, really cool. So you all have a fantastic night. Thank you all so much for joining with me, even if it's just for an hour a week. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.